So we had gone back to South Africa to visit my family. It was my dad's 60th, so it was a big planned sort of holiday. We were supposed to be there for three weeks. And all in all, it took us just under three months to get back. Um, when we left, it was a case of wash your hands. If you're sickly, wear a mask. And within a few days of actually getting to South Africa, it was flights cancelled, everything's locked down. So it was a big shock because it, it happened really suddenly. We had no time to try and get back um, before everything got locked down. Um, Emirates, Emirates basically axed, axed flights straight around the world, um, particularly from the African continent. Was Almost everything was axed almost all at once. It was interesting to see that we tried to tried to get different um, flights on board. As soon as we created another flight, they, they cancelled another flight, they cancelled, and eventually at the point where they just stopped and they said, well, no one's going home. Mm-hmm. And there were lots of other people who were sort of stranded, I guess from other countries, who sort of were visiting South Africa. And lots of blogs and different blogs that, we, that was, I remember I was going on and viewing that. Just Trying people to find stopped traveling back. instantly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was quite interesting to see, obviously scary. <laughs> but of course, scary. in in recent memory, we hadn't been through anything like that, so couldn't mm-hmm. have expected what was happening. No, not at all. No way. No. No. And so, when the idea of the the Comis Hotel came up, what was what was going through your mind? Obviously, there was the cost associated with it. What what process did you have to go through to get I, there in the first place? I can I can explain that. Mm. So. Uh, I was I was dealing mostly with them. It was it was they were called um, returning residents. Um, there was a small faction set up, a fractional group uh, set up within the government, and um, it took a while for them to set themselves up. But that's okay. I expected to take a little while. Um, it was quite costly to but myself. I didn't have the funds. I had to go out towards Constable Bank, phone them, get a loan from South Africa, and then agree with them a loan, loan and whatever else before I could even do that and get there. Once we had it, but I am grateful that that a cert, there was a service there. You know, they, you know, there was something at least. It yeah. did cost a lot of money, but I'm grateful something happened. Yeah, at the time um, we actually weren't too worried about the money because we just wanted to get home. Mm-hmm. Um, because we we ended up getting repatriation flights from South Africa to Heathrow. And then there was about 10 days in between getting to Heathrow and being able to get back to the island. So we ended up booking a flat in Blackpool um, just to sort of wait it out. So we were really excited just to be getting back to the island. Um, We were hoping that we would be eligible for like a payment plan or something. Um, but we weren't. We were told we had to pay it up front, no exceptions. Um, if we didn't pay it up front, then we would forfeit our place on the boat. Yeah, and this is the, yeah. second, the second group that yeah. went through. Um, basically, I can explain this as well. What happened was they f- we, we got an email saying this is how much it costs. Um, they took payment over the phone, and then we got a an email very soon after that that had like a, um, a, an exemption pass the entering out of the man mm-hmm. so we had an ancient pass for me but my, my son is not here he's 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 four and a half now almost yeah. five he was and nine months he was nine months then yeah. it was very small then um, and we got those papers once you had those papers like my wife said we have to told we have to wait a bit the exemption flight and the, and the actual boat departing was about a 10 day gap so again the loan was that for that as well getting money to go and stay in, mm-hmm. in Blackpool and wait there um, we hired a car as well for. Um, we hired, did we hire a car? Yeah, we hired yeah. a car to get us from Heathrow to Blackpool. Yeah, we hired. It, a car it was for a lot of expense. Yes, yeah. getting about back. About ten days. Yeah. Hired a car it was quite a it was quite a large amount. Mm. I mean, we burst. I mean, the amount of money borrowed, we burst way through that and other funds, to try, yeah. try and make sure. And um, <clears throat> um, obviously, a lot of people around the world probably spent a lot of money as well. Imagine people in Spain or whatever that were stuck mm. there as well. Um, but anyway. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, going obviously at that time, you wouldn't have known how long the borders would have been closed for and what your options were. So no. it must have been just any means necessary to get us back to the island. Was yeah. that the mindset? Yeah, it was. It was a case of, you know, there's an opportunity, jump mm. on, do what it, whatever it takes to be able to, to get back. Yeah. Mm. So take us then to the Comis Hotel and arriving back on the island, what was that like? Were you some of the first to come back and go through that scheme? We were the second group. So we um, had missed that on the first week. So we came back uh, on the second week. And as again, as I said, we were really excited to get back to the island. And then when we got here, there were uh, police at at the docks and it was Mm. a case of you will sign this document. Mm. Um, I didn't feel threatened to sign, but it it wasn't really an option. It was, you will sign this so that we can then 
put you on the bus and head you over to the commas. It just seemed a bit surreal, but just overdone. Yeah, it was a, because the first one came over, what we noticed is if we could see, we so actually saw people watching from their cars. And yeah. when we went past on the bus, we actually saw people and pointing. So it wasn't very... Um, you felt like you were yeah. a bit on show. Yeah, it became quite show, a, became spe- a bit of spectacle, yeah. didn't it? Spectacle, yeah. maybe a martyr kind of story. It was just a little bit weird. felt very weird. Yeah. Signing the document was very strange as well. Basically, say, if you don't sign this document, you're putting the boat and send you back. Yeah. yeah. We're already here now and we live here. I don't understand that either. It was quite yeah. weird. And obviously, staying at a, as a hotel in it for, for leisure can be a very, very pleasant experience. Obviously, something we've all paid for in our time, but this was very different, of course. What were the <laughs> rules and regulations that were set out to you when you walked through the doors well w- when we got there we thought oh this is this is lovely this will be like a little holiday and it really wasn't um you felt very restricted uh, the security guard had to come to the door knock on the door to let us out for our exercise hour again it was very surreal because you think oh that's not too bad but when you're in that situation you're sort of waiting at the door like five minutes before like am I allowed out now so yeah it, it felt very very weird and it got very tiresome very quickly the, the rooms were beautiful but like our room had no hot water um, and we were told that if they want, you know, we couldn't get anyone sent in to fix it, so we'd have to move rooms. And there were three of us in the one room, and we thought, no, we don't want to risk going to a smaller room. Um, so we sort of just laid out the two weeks with no hot water, um, which was did, difficult with the baby as did, well. Did, did eventually fix it. Remember the tap, tap function was something on the tap. Yeah, there was some issue, and yeah. Dan managed to sort of to sort it out. Yeah, I think yeah. I can't remember exactly how we yeah. got that, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> So just just going in, so we got to got to the hotel, uh, got off the bus, we expected to go through, and then went one by one, keeping keeping distance. Then uh, we were led to a room. Um, I think we changed room, didn't we? No, we kept the big kept room. the same room. Yeah. Okay, so they gave us a slightly bigger room, which is nicer, I guess, because we had a baby. We were the only one that group that had a baby. And yeah. Our son was teething at the time, so he was very loud, very grumpy, very annoyed. Yeah. And yeah. Being a room with two weeks with a teething baby is. Yeah, I mean, the, he would cry well into the night because he wasn't happy. He was also frustrated to the point where we had the room above us. They actually phoned down to make sure we were okay. It was very difficult doing it with the baby. I mean, it was just difficult for us, but mm. then the little one, he did get very frustrated as well. So what was a what was a standard day? What, what, were you allowed out at any points for exercise, of course, and, and meal times? That Most kind of people thing? were allowed out uh, once a day, and you ha- were given your exact time. Um, of, that you were allowed out because we had the little one we were allowed out twice um, so you think oh yeah I'm very lucky but you know even mm. twice a day and, and that was out to a, like a green courtyard yeah was it, to a green courtyard but you could see it had been re- uh, newly built so there were screws and nails in the grass it was a lot of rubble so we couldn't let the little one out onto the grass because it wasn't safe um, I think there were four plastic chairs out there that you could sit on um, but there wasn't anything to do so you you just sat outside for an hour or you could do laps around the little courtyard Um, not the most entertaining but yeah it was much needed after being locked up all day what what kind of effect does that have on on the psyche of course you cooped up with it with a nine month old anyway but for anybody who's trapped in a room for that length of time how how do you keep yourself entertained for starters you don't you don't yeah Yeah, (laughs) um we found uh i i I had to get a laptop from work and i was trying to work as well Hmm. um and then trying to work in there, trying to handle work and, and baby crying. And and we obviously, a couple of strapped together yeah, in a room. Tension was high. Tension gets um, high. And it's, it's just one of those, one yeah. of those scenario situations. I, it, it, it's, it, it, there were there were a few other people who complained about certain things. Like, for instance, uh, a lot of people complained, a lot of other people. Because you hear, heard people saying it to each other. When they used to bring the food, for example, now people need to eat I guess and that's part of the package anyway they brought it on paper plates and they gave you a plastic knife and fork and it was cold and it was cold mm. so yeah. basically I mean I guarantee it's, it's not the same 
quality of food that you'd get at the commerce now. Yeah. It it really was exceptional circumstances. Yeah. yeah. And it, it it wasn't great food. Um also with having the little one, they had nothing to offer for him. So we we were allowed one delivery when we first got there. Um we allowed someone to drop off something and it was only allowed once and so we got a whole bunch of baby food brought in for us and, and dropped off there. Um but we ran out the day before we were due to leave. We ran out of baby food and we asked, well, is it okay to get some more brought in? No, no, you've had your one delivery. That's it. Um, so, yeah, he he moved on to a bit more solid food a lot quicker than mm-hmm. expected. Um, yeah, just silly things like that you, that you think, well, that there's no reason for that. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, that the, the rules and regulations we had to abide by. Yeah, and who was who was enforcing that then? Obviously, I imagine the Comis had had staff who were, you know, adapting to that scenario. Uh, no, and, and yeah. another answer to that. So, with the, with the document that we signed when we got we got to port, in within that document, um, described the legislation to which we were following. So, if we didn't listen to everybody, we were, we were liable for arrest according mm-hmm. to yeah. that document. Right. So according, and under the Commerce Act. Yeah. If we was. wanted anything, we could phone the hotel reception. They wouldn't know, so they'd say, oh, well, we'll find out and get back to you. A day would pass, nothing, phone back. Any news? Oh, no, we haven't heard back. So a lot of run around, right. um, no real. There wasn't anyone there that could say, yes, you can do this, no, you can't do this, or we'll organize. Yeah. So very confused. Yeah. yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, I was offered not, not so long ago to go for a function there at the Commerce, and I didn't go. Yeah. Because it was like it's like PTSD going there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to go yeah. there. I don't want I mean, to go it, back it, there. It, it, yeah. <clears throat> like I say, it makes it makes you laugh and chuckle now. But at the time, it must. It, by the end of how long was it? You two were there weeks. two weeks. We were on... there for the full two weeks. Yeah. Um, during the time, Dan was very stressed out with work, um, and obviously the situation. I struggled with depression while I was there as well. Um, it just it wasn't it wasn't a good experience overall at all. And we were happy to be home. But we weren't home. It, like you, were, you, we were so close, but you know, weren't mm. weren't quite there yet. What was yeah. that feeling like when you were able to step out of those doors and go into your own home eventually? Honestly, I felt a bit loopy. <laughs> it, it, you do because you feel like, hang on, is is this real? Um, mm. And it, it does sound silly, but at the time, it was like we, we're allowed out. It, mm. it, it was just a very surreal mm. sort of feeling. Yeah, strange feeling. I have to admit, it was. It was it was weird because I have to admit, for example, when we were on break outside, we could see people walking past, and I remember saying to my wife, "How you know, I could literally just jump over that fence and run and yeah. go away." And I, I think to myself, I can't can't imagine being locked up somewhere else for even longer than two weeks. Mm-hmm. People like in prison or whatever. Yeah, it's just you just claustrophobic. I tell you what, claustrophobia was something. You're sitting yeah. in that room all day, every day. Rooms get really small, really quick. And you think to yourself, this room is, you know, and you sit there and you sit there and you sit there and the days go past and hours go past and staring at each other, mm-hmm. wondering what the hell to do. Um, so it was... There's not it's enough crazy. TV. There's not enough video games. There's not <laughs> enough books. There is nothing you can do to make that day go any quicker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From a wider perspective, looking at, from the looking from the outside in, you've described the the residents that were there taking photos of the bus coming out of the sea terminal and walking around, you know, in around the Comis Hotel. Did you feel much sympathy from the Manx residents, or was it a case of well, they've decided to take friends this path. and family? Yes, because mm. they they obviously knew our situation, but there was a lot of talk on Facebook that it mm. actually really hurt and. You know, I, I get that from an outsider perspective, um, they're sitting there thinking, you know, this is good to protect, um, but they, they no one had really much sympathy for, the, you know, us poor guys that were stuck in there. Mm. They they didn't really understand what it was like, and they said, oh, well, you can moan about the food, but, you know, at least you're back on island. Well, yeah, but we've actually paid a fair amount of money to come back here and be treated like outcasts, mm. and that's that's not really fair. Mm-hmm. We've described yeah. a fair amount of money, um, and not regarding the costs that it took you to get the flight back to just to England and the hire cars and everything else. How much was the bill for for the Comis Hotel and coming back through that route? For the two of us, because um, they didn't charge anything for the little one, was seventeen fifty. Yeah, thousand seven hundred fifty pounds. Right. Yeah. And we're going through obviously this refund process now. Part of the it was a recommendation from the Cape Brunner review, of course. Mm. How have you found that process so far? 
Um, I've, I've been dealing with the process myself, and uh, the process, uh, they've, they've been very nice. They've been very, they've, they've been very nice and very responsive, and they're asking questions, which is good. They're asking questions, wanting to proceed. Um, they have asked for a bit of detail. Recently asked for detail of, of how it was paid, which is, I assume, they want to make sure everything's, everything's fine and in order. Um, so the, the process of trying to get it done was, has been quite painless, I imagine, um, which is nice. They're asking questions. They're very, 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 um, what's the word? Um, intuitive, I guess, on mm. what's happening. Um, I, I imagine that they would need to dig through their, their records a little bit further. I imagine it's quite a, it's quite a lump sum for money. I just want to pay it to anyone. Mm. So I'm going to make sure. So I understand that process. Honestly, we didn't think we'd actually ever get that money yeah. back. So if they ask us to fill in X, Y, Z, we fill in X, Y, Z because we're just so relieved that there is a refund process. Mm. A lot of the, the ex-residents um, of Commerce have actually done a lot of hard work to get this done. And we're really grateful mm. that it, yeah. there, there is a, a positive outcome for us. Mm. Um, but again, we agree with, with the rest of the group that it should have been done a long time ago. It's been overlooked for a while. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> there was, and this, this this all spawned from the point where after a certain period of time, after May, to May 2020, I think it was, uh, when they decided that people didn't need to go to commerce anymore and they just were let in. And it was, well, not even a month later. Well, just that you could we isolate that at home. Position. That's all we wanted. We just wanted to go. It was like it was like we went to the position now. It was just people walking past us coming yeah. through, and it was like a feeling of dread. Thinking myself, we just went through this, mm. and these guys are walking past us. Mm. What's it? Yeah. And you know, it's like you know, it's, it's like mm. like you know, I can't, can't explain it. It's a very it's, hard feeling. It must have been impossible <laughs> not to think in retrospect. Oh, if we'd have held on a few more weeks, but of course, like you, you mentioned, you had your job to carry on and get back with. You had to prove we're, you're trying to get back to. We were yeah. running out of money with an arm month old, and yeah. that's a very, very, very scary feeling. Um, so the fact is, you know, how much money can you really borrow? What happens if you can't borrow any more money? And there's other people around the world who are stuck in the worst, are stuck in very such difficult situations. We'd have to fend. Like we, we, were, we were lucky in one respect. We were living with family at the time. But there were people around the world that would have gone to the commerce thing. They were living in yeah. paid for There were definitely people that had it a lot worse than us. Yeah, um, definitely. But it, it was difficult for us. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, part of the Cape Brunner review is looking ahead as well. What what happens if we end up in an emergency situation like COVID again? What do you think should be in place? What would you have loved to have seen back when COVID happened to enable people to get, like you say, back just back to their homes rather than having to go through this process? So, so um, I would imagine that, uh, for, for example, there, there were other countries that went through this, other countries that had expats moving in or, or something like that, or people coming back. I'd imagine they would have a response, a response, um, like, for instance, I imagine they had a response for military personnel, they had a response for other personnel, maybe medical personnel. They must have some form of response plan which they do to get people into the country fast or back into where they live. So if they, I imagine from the turnaround from this, they should have a response plan. I don't know if they have one already or not, yeah. but a response plan would be good. This is what we do. This and, is how we do it. And consistency with the rules. I found mm. that you know some people didn't have to isolate. Some people could go and isolate from home, and then some of us had to go to commerce. It wasn't one rule fit all. It was well, we'll pick and choose. You know yeah. who has to go where. And the and the payment thing was just one thing. There was other people that were offered a payment plan. We weren't offered a payment plan. Yeah. We told we had to pay. No, I thought that with a, with a baby of nine months old, not yeah. given a payment plan option when it's the cost fact is, of you know, money. It's a lot of money to yeah. raise a kid. It's a lot not of everyone has almost two grand just to outlay like that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And looking back on it now, of course, we're four years on. How does it sit in your memory? Is there still? Are you able to laugh about it now? Are you able to look back and think, "Wow, what we went through at that time was extraordinary"? Or is it still? You mentioned PTSD before. I imagine it's not far off. It's not far off. I mean, we we avoid yeah. the the commas. Oh, um, I don't want to go. We do. We try and and laugh about it now. We try and think lightheartedly. But if we really sit and think about what we went through there, it put a lot of strain on us individually, as a couple, as parents. Um, so we, we try and see the the lightheartedness of it now and joke and, and laugh about it, but it's not always I think, easy. I, th I think if you were a single person in there, it was just a person saying in there reading a book or something, you just have to wait the time out. But it depends on the circumstances that you have. Um, us for the baby was, it was interesting. A teething baby, uh, as you've seen, 
you know, halal tea that babies can get. They can be very grumpy, very angry. Of course, the little teeth are coming through their mouth. So there's a lot of pain that, that baby's going through, and because they there's so much pain, they cry a lot. So being stuck in a room. And as parents, you feel helpless partner, because you can't yeah. even take them for a walk, stick them in the pram, and go for a walk, calm them down. Couldn't do that. So, so walking around yeah, the room, it was helplessness them, at the time. Constantly yeah. jumping around around the room, just trying to get them to calm down, and then a few minutes later, they start crying again. So, on mm. you talk about sake when they're being stuck in a room with your partner, first of all, which is, should be a good thing, but you get on each other's nerves. Yeah, for two weeks screaming, straight, it's, yeah, it's screaming. <laughs> the, you know, you it start can be fighting, you start bickering. Yeah. Do you and, think uh, you came out stronger as a couple from it? Yeah, yes, I think definitely. so. I hope so. Well, you know, this is, we, 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 we're glad to get out there because I think if you stayed another two weeks and then one of us would have heard that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <clears throat> and, of course, the little one who is nine months old, I imagine one one day you'll look back and you'll you'll tell him about what, uh, what you all went through at that yeah. time. Yeah, so... Um, he actually has special needs. Uh, he's got developmental delay. And there is a part of me that thinks, well, you know, was it all related? You know, did how we reacted and, and our moods at the time and stress and all of that, did that affect him? And I know it's silly to think that, but it, it is something that goes through through your mind. He's a thriving young boy, don't get me wrong. He's, he's really strong um, and he's doing very well. But I don't think he would believe you know what we actually went through you'd think no we're just making up stories mm. so luckily he can't remember it <laughs> yeah he can't remember it yeah. and other Comis residents that you perhaps were aware of at the time you're in this group now how have they found the process of, of getting that refund have you heard anything else oh. I, I personally don't know. Um, I haven't heard anything so much about the refund process that everyone else is going through. Um, I th again, I think everyone's just happy that it's there. I know some of the residents there still want an apology, um, a proper apology, and I do think that is owed. Um, but, yeah, I haven't heard too much. Yeah. I guess they should make it available to to, to the registered residents that did this went through this process. Um, I, I know there's a site for them. There was a small little um, a small little release release on the government website. But they should make it more commonly known, like put it on radio or something, or repeat it in radio, so people know. If they don't know and they miss the cycle. Yeah, so it, it was wasn't well advertised. Period. The refund option. Yeah. I mean, uh, I should do it yeah. because, because it is a lot of money. Now, if you if you if, you, if, I, if I had to put put into case, let's say let's say you're not at our age, let's say you 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 you're retired. Now that money is a lot of money for retirees. Yeah. Um, it could be a lot of money. You know, mm -hmm. you know people drawing out their pensions and things like that. There's something to think about. So maybe maybe they could let them know a little bit easier. Yeah, just Make advertise the fact that there is a refund <clears throat> option there mm -hmm. and how to do it. Mm -hmm. I think would be good. Otherwise, otherwise, I mean, it's. What, what, but what, once again, I'm, I'm it just to wrap this all up. I'm very grateful that the government actually did something. So there's there's lots of pros and cons that came out of this. But if they hadn't initiated this whole program, we wouldn't have got back here. Yeah. So there's so in light of everything, it's great that this happened. But it was no deal. <laughs> but it's great that it did happen. In in, in the we're glad that we got home. Yeah, we got home. But it, yeah. we just wish it had gone about differently. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you for making it to the end of the Manx Radio Newscast. You are obviously someone with exquisite taste. May I politely suggest you might want to subscribe to this and a wide range of Manx Radio podcasts at your favourite podcast provider so our best bits will magically appear on your smartphone. Thank you. Thank you.